Star Bars Part 1, now on Blue Collar Coder. You're at a well-known coffee shop, and you fire the wrap up, and it's got this nifty little animation. And you think, hey, I can build that. I do that kind of thing a lot. Whenever I want to learn a new technology, I want to build something in it. And this time, that technology is a combination of Svelte and SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics. So let's get started. So we need to know a little bit more about what we're building. That starts with recording this animation on my phone and then sending it over to my computer. Next, we need to figure out the color codes and the aspect ratio of the control. So we're gonna have a long bar that's clipping its contents and has rounded corners. And maybe we'll add a little drop shadow here. And all that reads SVG to me. SVG is like having a headless Photoshop built right into the browser. Next step is to sketch out our approach. I'm thinking a single SVG that has a background with a rounded rectangle with a bunch of differently sized stars on top of that of varying rotation, opacity, position, and size. And that each would have its own velocity, meaning how fast it's traveling from left to right. And each would have its own spin, which is how fast it's rotating as it moves. So at the end of this, I want a custom element called star bar that has a percentage on it that I can set to set the width of this thing. And I'm thinking three steps to get there. First, get the basic graphics laid out, make the bar and a single star and get it all clipped up nicely and add that really cool backdrop. Next, put a lot of stars on there and then animate them. And then finally, get that all packaged up as a custom element. And so for all of that, I'm gonna use Svelte, which is cool because I don't know it all that well and it's a good thing to learn. So let's create a Svelte app by following the instructions on their site. And let's open up VS Code and start the app in the terminal. Ah, so this is a Svelte app, cool. So let's see how it looks in the browser, nice. So looking at the code, we have a little script that exports a property called name, a style sheet, and some HTML. Let's get rid of most of that, because we'll want to create an SVG tag to start with. And then let's create a new set of props, width at 100%, height at 30 pixels, and percent at, say, 80%. Now let's create the SVG base tag that will have the width and height. Now here's the cool thing about Svelte. If you have an attribute that matches the variable name, you can just use this little curly trick to set that. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is set the view box. I like to fix the coordinate system of my SVG graphics. So let's set that to 0, 0 to 100 by four. This will tell SVG that the upper left-hand corner is 0, 0, and the bottom right is 100 by four. So regardless of how the big graphic actually is, that'll be the coordinate space that we're working in. That way the code doesn't need to worry about the scaling stuff, SVG just does that for us for free. Now, why 100 by four? Well, that's basically the ratio of the bar. Actually, it's really thin, like, like really, really thin. Now with that in place, let's put in the background bar. So we'll give it a width, that is the width value as a percent and then a height of four, because that's the maximum, and then the class of bar, which we'll create as a new style. Okay, let's have a look. Hey, nice rounded orange bar. Cool, but it's not clipped. So what's that, and let's fix that by adding a clipping path. First you give it an ID, and we'll call this rounded clip and then you add some shapes to it, and in this case, it's the exact same rectangle as we had before. Now to clip everything, we'll wrap that rectangle in a new graphics group, or G tag, and add the clip path that has that kind of odd URL syntax. All right, let's have another look that looks about the same. But what we really want is that sweet inset drop shadow. Now I don't know how to do that myself, so I'm gonna Google inset drop shadow SVG, and the first hit actually gets a pretty good recipe. Now I'll be honest, I have no idea what this does, but I'll give it a go, so let's paste that in, and let's add that to the G tag using a filter, and let's have a look at that. Okay, it's pretty diffuse, so let's tighten it up a little bit, and I think I know how to do that because the offset and blur look really familiar to what I used to set in Photoshop. 
So let's crank those down and try again. Better, much better, but let's crank it down even further. Ah, that looks really good. Again, I only have an inkling of what all these tags do, but they work, and that's okay for this. So finally, we need a star, right? SVG has this path functionality, meaning that you can define a set of move and line points to define a shape, and then you can fill that shape. So that's what we're gonna do with this star. We'll create a path where the first point is a move to and all the subsequent nine points are line twos. Let me draw that out. So the first point is a move to, then from here, we line to each point, making 10 stops around the circle. Why 10? Well, it's a five-pointed star, but we want to get these little inside sections. We'll go out, then come back, then out, then back, and so on. Okay, let's create a make star function that will return a string that has the path for a star, and it'll take a size. And then we'll create an array of segment strings that will join together at the end. So let's write that. Now we need to iterate from 0 to 10. Then calculate the radians of the current degrees. Ugh. Okay, what does that mean? Well, cosine and sine in JavaScript work using radians, not degrees. Instead of 360 degrees, the maximum number is 2 pi, like 6.28 or something. Good news, though, JavaScript has a constant for pi. So let's create a constant called rad for radians, then set it to pi times 2, then over the current value of L over 10, 10 being the maximum number of points we're shooting for. Next, we need to calculate the distance. So for every odd number, we're just going to use the size of the star. Then for every even number, we're going to use some fraction of that, say 35%. The easiest way to do that is with a ternary, like this. Next, we set x and y to the sine and cosine multiplied by that. And finally, we add that x and y value to segments. For the first one, we need to move. And then for every one after that, we're going to use a line. So we'd use a ternary for that too. Also, and this is important to note, this star is going to be origined around 0, 0. So to move it around, we'll need to translate it. Okay, so let's see if our work paid off. Let's create another SVG tag just to play around with. We'll give it a width and height of 100. Then we'll add a path tag and give it a class called star. Then we'll add a D attribute, and that's the path attribute, and we'll call that function with a size of 50. And finally, we need to translate it into the center, so let's add a transform with a translate of 5050. This moves the thing over and down by 50 units. In this case, those units are pixels. And then we need to define the CSS star class. And that'll do it. Let's have a look and see. Okay, but it's faint but I'm sure it's gonna look great when it's on that orange background. In fact, let's try that. But let's make it a lot smaller and change that translation. Okay, let's have a look. Sweet. Okay, I'd say that's enough for this video. In the next video, we're gonna pick up where we left off and make a lot of stars and then animate them. My friends, as always, I would love to hear from you. Please like this video if you liked it. Honestly, it helps a lot. These videos take a lot of time to create, and it's nice to know that they're appreciated. Of course, I would love you to subscribe. And if you want more information, feel free to comment as well. See you next time on Blue Collar Coder. Be kind to each other.